of the person you want to be is to waste the person you are. You're already your dream. Start living it. When you think humanitarian, she comes to mind. When you think advocacy for change, she comes to mind. When you think success, she comes to mind. When you think consistency, she comes to mind. When you say broadcast journalism, she definitely comes to mind. Telling us a story today is Adora Onyechere. Well, my name is Adora Onyechere. She's a lady who wears the coat of many colors, hence when asked to tell us about herself, we had an earful. I am a broadcast journalist, um, I'm a social advocate, uh, someone who speaks out for humanity. I'm also a gender you know, activist, not a feminist in the world, but I believe that women are human beings and so they deserve equal um, treatment based on capacity, so I'm, I'm seeking more towards equity than equality. Um, I'm also the initiator for Yellow Jerry Can Save the Child Foundation, which advocates for women and children on um, social welfare, especially for people, especially uh, those who have been affected during the war situation, uh, the insurgency, sectoral violence, ethnic crisis, and also for domestic violence against women and children. So um, you, you can consider that it will border from just you know lack of welfare to also issues pertaining and surrounding rape issues and child molestation. So yes, that's what we that's that, that's what we focus on, and we've been able to work at advanced you know in advanced levels from between Nigerian government and some other countries, Chad, Niger, and even Mali. So. Um, is stretched and what we find out is that what causes war in a particular African country is not what might cost in another. So yeah, that's it. I'm also the um, chairperson for Most Valuable Governors Wise Award Forum, um, which focuses on the initiatives of women who are first ladies across the state and seems to excoriate the meaningness of their projects amongst their constituents and their communities. And what this does is it gives a platform to the constituents and the members of the community to be able to decide if these initiatives are far-reaching and have been able to do what they say they will do for the people. Uh, considering the fact that it is not a constitutional state of office, however, it is also one of the key offices uh, for governance, especially as a first family. So um, that's, that's one of the many and I am also the co-host for Kakaki the African Voice on AIT and I also produce and host Gender Agenda on AIT as well. Um, I, also, I also seem to think that uh, on the other hand uh, I also bother as a humanitarian just being a human being and reaching out to other people regardless of any platforms. I think you know being your brother's keeper makes you first you know uh, the first call of humanity for me that's it. And um, yes, I'm also the matron for Nigerian Children Ambassadors. And these are children who have voices to speak out for the Nigerian child across all boards. And um, it's, it's just last year we, we had an event with the National Orientation Agency, which I happen to be the Mission Peace and Voice. So I wear a lot of cops, you know, I wear a lot of cop. And um, just, just to narrow it down, I also do a radio program called, on Ray Park called Nigeria Speaks. So we, we focus on society for societal evils, things that are happening, and even the good side of governance and those who are working, and how to integrate some of these voices from just being the voice of dissent to a voice of understanding and being part of it. Because we believe that citizenry is one thing, uh, it's a title for everybody, but how do you participate? How do you use the citizenship? You know to make influence in the government so yes the, the, this is just a bit of a few i'm an unspoken word artist to crown it all i i, I seem to say I, I think it'd be better to say i'm a poet <laughs> because poet in motion you know like somebody would say a veteran artist but spoken word for me is life and it's something that i've been doing since i was a child without even having the title to it so yes and uh, i happen to have had the privilege of working with you know different talents especially within my workspace the children who have been displaced and uh, we were able to put together an album uh, it was called change smitten and uh, we did a video called arise so yes and um, hopefully someday I will be able to um, do a, maybe a pantomime or something but it's all within the art class yes the Adda of the Onye Chere family credited disciplined nature to her parents bringing down to basics I'm from Imo State, and I am from Okigwe local government area, precisely Hubei, 
um, and inside it will be a place called Amago. Amago. Uh, descriptional uh, for that, descriptional display for that would be Amago, the, the drones of lions. It's like Game of Thrones, but you know, the more local perspective. So yeah, that, that's where I'm from. And uh, both parents are from the same state and um, different, different, uh, the same local government, but different communities. I have a very broad family. Um, I come from a family template that encompasses other people's children. So I would, if, if you talk about the nuclear formation of my family, I come from a family of six, but if you're talking about a real time family, we're probably 22, you know, because you have a lot of cousins and, you know, coming through the same family structure. Your parent, my parents are very uh, benevolent people and uh, they seem to be, uh, I think they are humanitarian and in the sense of raising kids and giving education, I think that's your own sense of philanthropy. But within us we're six and um, I'm the first of six children. Um, I'm also the Ada, and that's why my name is Adora. Um, in fact, my full name is Ada Diorama and uh, my middle name is uh, Amarachi. It used to be the other way around until um, I'll come to that part, but I'll, I'll save you for the best. So, um, yes, yeah, so I have, a, I have um, about uh, three sisters and two brothers. Growing up as a child, I have very, I, I won't say extreme because I don't know what will happen after this show. So, I would say I've really had tough parents, very traditional in their sense of upbringing, detailed and very thorough. So, nothing gets unnoticed by my parents. You can't lie, you know. I don't know if they have a code, you know, that you just, they just look at you and they're able to tell when you're about to lie, you know, so um, it was hard to get away with a lot of things. Um, my, my, my mom, uh, I grew up knowing my mom to be a very strong, passionate, uh, intentionally intense woman. Uh, what she believes in, she believes in, you can't even change her mind, except my dad, of course, and maybe God from heaven. But, you know, um, I grew up with parents who agreed in their style of parenting. So you can't tell my dad you want to do something and he says, no, and go to my mom and say, oh, mommy. They both, if my dad has said, no, forget it, you know, it's dead on arrival when you go to my mom, just forget it. You know, there's no apologies for it. He will say, why did he even come to me in the first place? You know, so basically the, the, that, that journey put a lot of imprint in my life growing up as a child. Understanding that, you know, parenting is, is like, it's like co-authoring a book. You know, uh, one person has got to agree that this is the prologue, the preface, you know, another person will do the epilogue and all of that. So, um, my parents have an amazing relationship. I think most importantly is their relationship with God. You know, growing up as a child, um, there were times when I used to be really annoyed in the morning when they wake me up for morning prayer you know that was just when the sleep was sleeping in you know and it's by force you know that's one thing and again i'm from my parents are Igbo. you know they're in, they're intentional in everything you know tradition is not something you can negotiate so um i will pray in Igbo, you know so you can imagine read Igbo bible you know so <laughs> so yes that's a kind of you know parent and I had and my mom would sing hymns before we even start you know so I bought my five 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 and I'm like God you know in do we have to do this you know so um, I, I, I just grew up in that setting that you know even looking back at it today I wish we had more of that because it seems to be lost her passion for creative arts came against the desire of her parents in her academics um, I went to my primary school early days in fact um, I went to Starland Private School, Lagos. We lived in Lagos at the first stage of my life and um, I ended up going to four secondary schools. Um, I had a love for instruments and so I, I, I played quite a, a, a lot of instruments. I played the piano, I played the violin and I played the, con I played the conga. And uh, I grew up thinking I would play in an orchestra and be a musician of some sort but my dad sank it into my head that um, I will not send you to a school and either I want a doctor or a lawyer or you know the titular professions. I have two things I can eat over and over again. <sighs> I like a cross soup. Yeah. It's not like your everyday okra. Like it has a lot of dimensions sweet. Sometimes I put cutting eggs, sometimes I put St. leaves. it depends on the time, but it's got to be healthy. You know, it's got to be healthy. I use very little oil in my cooking. Um, I steam a lot. Um, I also, I definitely also know that I can eat corn and pear. 
the whole year trust me i can survive put me in a bush and say no food but cod and beer ah god will bless you you know so i i like my cod and beer you know i almost ran into somebody coming here because i was looking at roasted cod but god you know i just packed and behaved myself so yes i, I like okra soup i also like fish pepper soup nicely done with sweet potatoes and so those are the things i can eat around the clock and um, potato is something you basically find anywhere and everywhere so for me i like basic staple foods that i can get my hands on even anywhere i am i can just say potato ah, okay happy that's something but i don't like to okay give me basmati rice it's nice but if i traveled out and uh, maybe i'm in my village or somewhere uh, the spelling of basmati self i don't even know where they will find it you know they first of all give me local rice that ask me to taste it you know so um yes I, I like that and then i i think i make the best cocktails you know i'm very good at making cocktails anything culinary you know i once had a radio show on frc and called curious cook you know cooked on live radio and all that it was very inspirational for me because i realized that there was a passion not right since really you know uh, a show that i was doing and i was able to study the food and the healthy qualities of certain foods. The single mother of one dotes on a lovely son and reminisces a heartbreak and how it shaped her life for better. I have a lovely son, he's eight years old. Um, his name is David. Um, he really thinks he's David in the Bible, you know, so every time he's killing Goliath, I don't know how many times Goliath died, but you know, I let him have it. This is, this is his childhood, you can imagine. and. Um, uh he's a sweet he's a sweet boy very passionate about what he believes in very strong willed and um very curious questions everything and anything um there are no rules you make without explaining to him why he must obey them I fell in love when i was in the uk and then we met and it, it was supposed to be a grand you know experience of a lifetime and you know especially when issues about family acceptance and interrelational background coming back home um, so we, we, I realized that one, I was very young and not too young for a lot of people, but for me, out of inexperience and perhaps I was very naive. I still I am a bit naive now, but I'm, my eye don't open small. So, you know, based on that, um, we, I realized that there were so many things about marriage that was not just about falling in love and just happily ever after. There were a lot of things that you need to consider. And regardless of the fact that I was a hard romance addict, you know, who believed in love and sunsets and holding hands and mirroring your life through the other person, in the real life it was more difficult because there were so many things you need to consider. And I had just been in, I had been in the UK most of my life and I was supposed to get back home and get in touch. But he lived there and wanted to spend the rest of the life. So to cut a long story short, there were divisions in you know in priorities and one was the fact that you know there was no way I knew the tradition would take place outside the country you know you would always have to come home to naturalize and get interventions from both sides and you know so um, it happened that you know to cover a long story short one thing led to the other I didn't even know I was gonna have a baby I was already pregnant the whole issue started and um, voila um, my dad had that, you know, just put a stamp on the feet and said, well, if you're going to get married, you need to meet the man you're going to marry. You need to come back home, the things that ought to be done, you know, certain things must be set out. And I don't know why, you know, they just felt that this young girl had been taken advantage of, but I felt I fell in love, you know, so, and I'm sure he has his own side of his story. But I, I respect him. It, I think he's a very wonderful person, and I'm sure that wherever he's is, he's doing well with his life. Uh, he's a neurosurgeon. He's a doctor, and I believe that you know, in his new family's you know background, because he's moved on since then, he's been able to, you know, look at the issues and take them in faith and move on. Um, for me, I have learned one thing uh, very clear: that if you decide to do anything that has to do with the rest of your life, is your choice. And those choices will make or mar you for the rest of your life. Um, for me, I have learned to be stronger. Um, it was difficult getting over it for a time. I mean, it took a long time before I even, you know, began to have conversations with anybody else. You know, um, it was close to five years. 
and I also had a son that needed to put all my energy in grooming and loving. Um, it was also very tough because he looked a lot like his dad, so I just couldn't apprehend it. So um, it's also taught me to choose carefully when it comes to life partnership. This broadcaster whose role as a co-host in Kaka Ki, the breakfast show on AIT brought her to fame, discusses her journey to dark communications. Whilst I was in the airport at some point, I saw somebody from the UK that saw me on the reality TV show. I said, hey, you're in this country, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm almost on my way out, you know? And we got started, you know, and started talking and like, oh no, somebody, somebody needs to meet you. You know, you need to meet somebody and all that. And, um, before you know it, he started talking to me about AIT and I'm like, what's that? You know, told me about the owners, I'm like... So he invited me for a meeting and then I got off, I remember getting off the taxi and then meeting the um, SWO, who is uh, Chief Raymond Darbacy, the owner, and I didn't know he was the owner and he was asking me about subsidy. And I'm like, yes, I think subsidy should be the way forward. I mean, like, people should begin to understand that to be able to expect development and yada yada. And he's like, oh, you're anti Nigeria. I said, well, you're opinionated. You know, and he went and we had this fiercy argument. And I said, excuse me, I don't have to think like you just because you think like that. And then there were all the people there who were part of the um, Madame Tosin, a few people there. And I didn't know who they were because I was just talking to ordinary human beings. And next thing he says, oh, she'll be on Kakaki. I'm like, what? Oh, uh -huh. you know, what's that? You know, so, and uh, like, before you know it, I was put up on the stage. I was just going with it, because for me, I'm out already. Like, if you like, if you need all your talk shows, I'm just going, just honored this invitation. And um, I see they knew my mind. They called for a meeting immediately, a management meeting, and then study an interview, and then they gave me a letter, and then a contract, and all that. I'm like, man, this guy's a spot. And, um, they asked and I asked them, you know, what, you know, what do I get from this? And I made my demands really clear and I let them know from onset. So I wasn't looking for a job when I began with it. I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't in the, I wasn't applying. I never went to the station and said, oh, please, here I am. I want to be a presenter. I think some, I think fate found me, you know, because I wanted to do something, but outside the country, you know, so, and it's been four or five years since then, I've been on the show, I've been able to develop my own program and for me that, that's been my goal since I joined um, joining the organization to be able to develop an independent program tailoring women's issues and bringing to birth the, the, the plight of women in Nigeria and across Africa as well. So, um, okay, and I, I must say AI has, given, has been fantastic in giving me the platform to be able to express the thoughts of Nigerians, to be able to speak out and be able to deliberate on issues. Being on Kakaki is the reason why I'm on the show today because it's giving me a lot of you know popularity and a celebrity status. So I don't consider myself a celebrity. I, I just so uh, well just think I'm a normal human being. And I find a lot of my cool celebrities and you know and deforming. It. I'm like ah, this person knows they go toilet. You know the level of packaging. I'm like wow that must be very tough being that way because it denies you the joy of really being human and mixing up with people and getting critical real-time understanding of what you're really doing well you know everybody wants to suck up to just take a picture and a selfie but for me the real people are the people on the streets you know um, the leprous person right there next to my name my gate or you know the woman who doesn't have anything to do going into the market just with people and the people in the office who probably are the cleaners for me that's where I get the details from they tell you the real time stuff it's like a driver and a cook they know what's up with their master the new Nigeria change advocate bears herself as she shares on her political template if called to serve I feel that, that uh, I think I know that I'm called to serve um, in whatever capacity um, I once said to a member of my studio, I said, if you make me a clean, I'll clean with love and do it passionately. You know, if you, if you, if you make me a sweeper, I'll sweep with love and do it passionately. It's not what I'm doing, it's how I'm doing it. So I'm not even waiting for a platform to begin service to humanity, and that's why I do a lot of things I'm doing. But on the biggest scale, I think to have all of these things holistic is to develop policies 
that work for the sake of Nigerian people. Policies that are implemented and followed through, not policies that leave the drawing rooms and the tables that are being conversed and then forgotten the next day. Policies that are sensitive to the Nigerianness and the African spirit, not to the West. Not treaties that harmonize intentions of the West for the sake of exploitation of the black African race. I believe that if we as a country look at the issues surrounding us, a lot of them are policy woven. And I think for us, we've moved together in oneness as a people and uncover all of these gray areas. We need to redefine what policy making is and development. Um, I believe that in what capacity I'm ever called to serve, I think my first drive is to look at policy development and implementation is to look at social innovation and to look at education. For me, those are the three critical angles. And I believe when we do that, then every other thing has a structure which it is already going to work with. Whether it's infrastructure, whether if it's social amenities, whether if it's politics, whatever it is. The reason why we have failed in this country is that we are all poly tricking instead of making policies that work for the sake of politics. So when you're poly tricking, you're thinking of party, you're thinking of endorsements, you're thinking of ego, you're thinking of you know, cabals, you're thinking of systems, you're not thinking of people, you're not thinking of sectors, you're not thinking of institutions. So what you now finally get is that you have a big divide between the rich and the poor. So you get people who are already rich impoverishing more the already impoverished people. And so you're saying, oh, there's inflation. Who really is feeling the inflation? The poor. You're saying the price have crashed. Who's going to feel it? The poor. You're saying that a dollar in the market is against the naira. Who's going to feel it? The black marketers who are selling these things, normal day average traders who are trying to survive. So at the end of the day, it's still not about the rich. The rich would always have their avenues and the adventures and the corridors in which they can operate. In fact, it is the rich that makes it difficult for the poor to succeed. So for me, my ideology of leadership is that first you've got to be a servant before you can lead. I drink a lot of tea, so, <laughs> and yeah, and um, I, I normally go to, um, I, I have a place where I, I try to unwind a lot, you know, it's called Salaman, somewhere we sit too, and it gives me room to work outside the bubbles and the hearts and the, the, the glitz, and I'm able to fulfill my deadlines and follow through my timeline. Sometimes I do, sometimes I even catch a nap just putting my head there. You know, I do a lot of swimming and uh, I do yoga as well. But this is where you definitely find me most of the day because it helps me to wind back, work, and wind back. As a passionate humanitarian with poem in an album, Change Smitten, that is currently on stalls, emotions come to bear in these words. I pledge to Nigeria my country, spoken words made under oath. To lie under oath is to become subject to persecution for perjury. Lead us. Do you not lead us into internal damnation? For every pledge you make you so hurt each day. Looming over us by the thrust of your self-designed mishappenstance is stagnation, frustration, and for most of us, resignation. Who do you think you're fooling? Take a look around you. Every treasure chest laid in the mesh is the undoing of us the rest. For avenge they shall, their will might have begun. For they are in their mind's eyes. There is no greater terror than for a father to deny paternity and his responsibility. What you do not give, TikTok says the clerk. But time far spent and all spelled a dent, they have begun to take. Leaders, don't you feel the hedge fever? Far spread and lack of disease. The clustered air of my Amon brothers and sisters. Nothing's done, so they beat their own drums. Drums of war, you call it. But for many vices, lacking corporates and awaiting purgatory, the drum rolls are of revolution. We are tired. We are tired of leader screamers, talkers, cheaters, teasers, players. It's time we have leaders who practice what we speak for the lack and practice of what they preach. It is time to listen. Listen to the voices of our unborn children for they are burners underneath those yearnings, yearnings for emancipation from those plagues of broken notes. Arise, arise, O oh comfort, Troy. Nigeria's cup, we must 
obey. I, I'm, a, I'm a soft rock fan. I'm a soft rock, jazz, and classical music fan. I also be like a bit of, um, I, I like a bit of country and raga. But when I go to the karaoke, you would find me either singing, in fact, they're tired of me, either singing, you know, simply the best, or you sing Believe, Do You Believe in Life After Love, or you, you find me singing Turn Your Lights Down Low by Lauren Hill, or you, you find me singing um, a, a song by Meat Loaf, um, I Will Do Anything For Love. You know, so you find me singing classical ballads and all that. So whenever I pick up the mic, I hear people, people chanting, mmm, my daughter has come again, you know, but it's sort of exciting because, you know, it, it also shows that people listen. And there are a lot of people who, the kind of people that even be the karaoke, people, not normal people, I'm not saying they're mad, but, you know, there are people who probably find working nine to five, you know, the, the sort of environment you have, uh, like-minded people who are actually serious everyday life people, but, you find when they unwind the karaoke, you see another side of them. It shows, it shows that they have a soft sport. I'm sure if I called you this a karaoke, you know, I'm thinking you'd be singing maybe Rihanna, you know, or um, work, 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 or something. But I, I'm not sure. But I, I'm thinking that it's something that people should indulge. You know, it might seem like a waste of time for people. What am I going there to carry mic? But you exhaling. For me, it, it's part of that. Adora Onyechere is a breath of fresh air and promises to be more, giving encouragement to those looking up to her. Life is a script, you are the writer. So whatever you write in it, this is what anybody would read about. And I say that because we all wait for someone to do something for us. We all wait for someone to help us or give us money or build us. But somebody else built those people. Somebody else did the others and did the others. And the possibility that we've never really looked in what and known our capacities and our strengths should be frightening enough that whatever you set your mind to do, you can do it. Above all, there's a quote that comes to me naturally every day. To dream of the person you want to be is to waste the person you are. You're already your dream. Start living it. You don't wait. So, Marley, we are smitten by this lovely lady.